We are here with somebody who I consider uh, biotech royalty. Uh, this is uh, Dr. Harlan Waxel, who is now with Acasti Pharma. And uh, you used to be probably more famously known for your time with Imclone. Um, Very true. Now, this is a guy who doesn't need to be running a biotech company. You have gr had great success in your career, and you spotted something that called your attention and said, I, I want to take the helm here. Uh, and, and help this company. So let's talk about it, Casti, a little bit. Well, I'd be happy to. I did get excited about it. I uh, was uh, presented the company by a friend of mine who I was looking at a portfolio. His portfolio included the parent company of a Casti called Neptune. And in looking at that portfolio, it was very clear that Neptune had a potential product in the area of cardiovascular that I thought was, um, was not only unique, but something that could be a, a very easy billion dollar type of product. And why was that exciting to me? It is rare that somebody comes across a potential drug that has a safety profile that is already well understood. And we're working with something called the phospholipid omega-3 coming from krill, that small crustacean that, that we, uh, we, we go ahead and fish from Antarctica. Um, and that product that we have has already been in humans in a nutraceutical fashion through Neptune. It's been used in, in hundreds and hundreds of people uh, for use in uh, general wellness. Everybody's into omega-3s. You can't go to a, uh, any kind of store anymore without seeing omega-3 fortified, whether it's eggs or milk, cheeses, cereals. It goes right across the board. And of course, you can also buy it as, as a supplement. And fish oil supplements would fill the wall of any room. Uh, there, there are that many of them. N krill oils are very, very rare. You don't see a lot of them. They're very few in any stores. And they're very different and unique from, from anything that's taking place in the fish oil area. And part of that reason is because the composition is so different. This phospholipid component of it makes it so unique. So it was a rare opportunity to get to work with a company that had already a strong patent position, which has gotten even stronger over the course of the last six month period of time, that has a product candidate that is safe, never been any kind of side effect issues at all with the krill oil, and in addition to that, a product candidate that is clearly able to address a medical need, namely hypertriglyceridemia. There already is a drug on the market, Loveza, which sells right now at about $1.3 billion of annual sales for lowering triglycerides in individuals who have very high triglyceride levels. So omega-3s are known to work. And there are other companies working with fish oils that have already shown the same kind of thing. For me, being able to develop a drug with good patent protection, with great safety profile, and with an indication that I know what I need to do to get there, and I know what the FDA requires for us to get there, is very exciting and very enticing. Because of that, and because of data that they were able to generate from earlier studies, I was excited about getting involved with this company. I remember you telling me when I met you previously that you had a personal experience with the science as well, that you... Uh... I have. Well, once I learned about krill oil, I am somebody who is statin intolerant. I'm one of those 12% of the population that can't take statins, and yet, coming from an Eastern European background, I have hyperlipidemia across the board. I have high cholesterol, I've got high LDL, I've got an HDL that's okay, but I also have elevation in triglycerides. And once I read about this and learned about it, I put myself on that to see what impact it would have. And it's had a dramatic impact across the board. I don't know if it does this across the board to everybody, but for me, it had an impact in all of my lipids. It not only lowered my total cholesterol, but it lowered my LDL, improved my ratio of LDL to HDL, and improved my triglycerides. You know, that's a case of N equals one, but in this case, it's someone who wasn't working with the company at the time, who understands drug development, and I got excited about it simply because I saw what benefit it had to me. And I've heard that anecdotal story, not just from myself, but from many other people. So it is uh, part of the basis for me being excited about it, and I must say, I am a, a continued habitual user of omega-3 phospholipid. I, I take this every day, and it's a remarkable drug for me. The implications of this, uh, as you said, the drugs that are out there have many side effects. For example, they're incredibly expensive and so forth. So uh, tell us a little bit about the market uh, potential for this type of treatment. So again, we're focusing on triglycerides, and that is a little different than the whole lipid profile. 
Stans are addressing a different aspect. They're addressing the bad cholesterol, the LDL, and the market for the Stans is around $35 billion. For fish oils, it's very different. The overall fish oil market in 2012 will be somewhere around $8 billion. Of that $8 billion, though, you have to break down what is the prescription aspect of that. And the prescription aspect, about $1.3 billion from one drug, one prescription drug, the Lovesa, the fish oil, that's how much it comprises. So this is an area that is growing and changing and will continue to evolve. My personal feeling about this is that we're in the midst of an epidemic. We're in an epidemic with obesity, with fast food, with diabetes, and this is a growing and growing area because the main implication of those things is an increase in triglycerides. And drugs that can counter that are gonna be increasingly desired because the ramification of having hypertriglyceridemia is having coronary artery disease. And if we can go ahead and do things to stop that, that's a great thing. And my belief is, beyond the fish oils, that our drug will have uh, an ability to be taken at a lower dose, will have greater implications in terms of its ability to be titered to a patient's need because you're going to be able to go to higher dose, won't require being taken with any kind of food or fats like the current drugs that are out there. And I think that overall, this market area is going to grow pretty dramatically. So I believe that we have the potential of having what I consider a blockbuster type of drug, a drug that could be greater than a billion dollars in value. One of the things that struck me about you when I first met you was, unlike many CEOs who I come across who are dying for attention and who want the mm -hmm. publicity and the media and so forth, you said, look, I, I've got a company to build and I know what the steps are in building a company and what it's really going to take for us to get to the next level is data. And that's very important to bring up right now because as we look at the rest of 2012, you've got some data that we're going to be expecting in the latter half of this year. Can you talk about that a little bit? One of the things about biotech in general is that everybody is trying to build based on hope and expectation, based on laboratory data that they have. Oftentimes we have a lot of hyperbole about what we're doing. I think this is one of those situations where you don't need hyperbole. What you need is data to show what's happening. Uh, I've already built a biotech company and I understand the hyperbole that goes with that and fortunately we were very successful at bringing to fruition what we believed would take place with a breakthrough type of technology. In this case it's a little bit of lower hanging fruit. Uh, we know what the technology should do, we know what omega-3 should do. What we need to prove is that the phospholipid omega-3 has greater potential than the other drugs that are out there that are doing the same kind of thing like the other omega-3s. So to me, everything comes down to data. We are doing the clinical studies now. This is the year that we're going to be generating that data, and I am very excited about it and looking forward to it because I believe the data is going to demonstrate the kind of potential this drug is going to have. Harlan, I wish we had more time with you, but thank you for stopping by and uh, sharing this with you. One more quick question I'm sure everybody's dying to know the answer to. Are there plans to be listed in the U.S.? When can we start buying the stock here? Well, it's a very good question, and uh, we are a Toronto Stock Exchange listed company. Our plans are to make sure that any actions that we take will be based on data. So based on the data that we'll be generating for our phase two studies, if that data is strong, uh, we'll be able to go ahead and, and change things, possibly list in the U.S. and, and at the same time do a financing uh, that would, work, would, would be needed for us to go into our next stage of development, to go into those registration studies that we hope to do in the U.S. Wonderful. Thank you, sir. So Pleasure. Much. Good Very to see much. you. Very good to see you. Thank you. All right. Take care.